I'm Angel, and today I'd like to talk to you about what McCorma has to offer for a full end-to-end -end AP automation solution in Dynamics GP. I'll first walk you through the different products that we have, and then we will go into Dynamics GP, and I'll show you the software in action so you can see how McCorma can streamline your process. First up is receiving invoices, and for this we have two products. One is Invoice Capture, which brings in your vendor's invoices automatically using AI technology to read those invoices. Then for your invoice approvers, we have Mobile Workflows, which allows them to review and approve the invoices through a web browser or on their phone without ever getting into Dynamics GP and it gives them the ability to see all invoices they need to approve in one place. Next up is selecting payments. And with the Payment Hub, you have several features, one being the action board for your AP staff to be able to, re to create payment batches and process them all from one screen across company databases. For your payment approvers, like your CFO and controller, they have a separate product called Power Approvals, which gives them the ability to review and approve payments across company databases within a app on their phone or through a web browser. We also have Secure Approval Workflow that helps you define who needs to approve, at what dollar amount, and what signatures need to go on your in-house checks when printed. Then next up is payments. And with the Payment Hub, you have the ability to do in-house payments with Micker Check technology, or we have an additional service called Remote Payment Services, where you can allow an outsource provider to send payments on your behalf. That can be check, ACH, or virtual credit card, whatever your vendor might choose. Now let's jump into Dynamics GP so I can show you a full demo of how all of these products will work together. All right, so here we are in Dynamics GP, and to get started, we're going to look at Invoice Capture. Now this is a standalone product. It does not have to be connected with the Payment Hub, but if it is, of course, it makes a great end-to-end -end process. So in dealing with your invoices, you'll have your vendor send them in to a dedicated inbox where the AI technology will read the information, attach the invoice, and pull it into Dynamics GP here into this um, invoice capture validation window. So here we see several invoices from different vendors. And if we look at one here, we see that it attached a PDF as well as the body of the email. If I double click, it will automatically bring up the invoice that I need to look at and verify. And it will give me a window here where I can add some additional information. We do not have three-way matching or PO matching, but if there is a PO involved, you can um, put that information here, as well as a better description of what this is about. Um, on this window, since it's pulled in the vendor, it is giving us the payment terms and those are already set. Now, if we hit process, it takes us to the transaction entry window where here we can change the payment terms if needed or look at the distribution under this tab. So as an AP clerk, they could make some changes or adjustments before submitting for approval to the invoice approver. Now, in order to send this through the workflow, we do need to assign a batch. So I'll go ahead and do that here. And then I can go ahead and hit submit. Now it will allow me to put in an additional comment if I want to. So anything I want to say specifically about this to the invoice approver, I can do that. All right, now that it's been submitted, we can close this window and it's going to bring us back to the validation window and we can see that it's been removed. Now, let's talk a little bit about the other features on this window. So I could have assigned a batch here and that would have gotten assigned to all of the vouchers as I go through this process. Now, as you're looking at all of these invoices here, once you have 
use the AI technology for a while, it will start to get very familiar with your vendors and where they put their information on their invoices and everything's going to link up properly. Um, and so when that happens, you'll start getting a lot of invoices like this uh, from different vendors that all the information looks correct and you feel pretty confident that the AI, AI has read it all properly. And in that case, you do have the ability to highlight them all and hit process under the action. And then it'll bring them all into the transaction entry window where you can still view the attachments and add information and do all of that. It's just a little bit quicker process um, when you're able to go through it like that. And you also might notice on this very first one, that there is a triangle. Now this one's not being able to be selected because it's saying there's an issue. And a couple of things that can come up, if it's a new vendor, it may not have automatically selected the vendor ID because it's not familiar with it yet. So if this had been blank, the error would probably be that it wasn't able to find it. Doesn't mean that that vendor's not in your system. They may very well be there and you just need to link them up that first time. And then from then on, it will learn. In this particular case, it found the vendor, but it's still saying there's an error. And the reason for that is because it found that the document number was a duplicate. So what you'd want to do there is hop over to transaction by document, pull that number up, verify that sure enough, it, this had been an invoice already submitted by that vendor and this was a duplicate. So then in that case, you would just right click on here and disregard. So that one's not gonna get processed through. So I'm gonna go ahead and send these through like we talked about. So all at once, I'm going to hit actions and process. I'm sure I wanna do that. And then it's gonna create those transaction entry. It's going to also give me a report that I can look at it. So all of the ones that it created a transaction entry for, I can see those there. And now I can just backspace and submit them through the workflow. So I can go ahead and submit, put any comments. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for a couple of these. So then we can move on to the next process, which would be to show you what mobile workflows is going to look like. Mocorma Mobile Workflows is the next product I'm going to show you, and this ties right into invoice capture. So once you have uh, sent all of your invoices through for approval, those approvers can receive an email letting them know that they can come out here to the Macorma Mobile Workflows app. Now they can access this from their phone on an app or through a web browser like I'm doing here. So from the web browser, they will pull up mobile workflows. They will go into the payables transaction approval and they can see multiple companies with multiple invoices to approve. So I'm going to dive into this one right here. And here we see some of those invoices that we just saw before when I was processing them through invoice capture. So we can see any notes that were put in there. If no comments were put, it will still tell you who sent these through for approval. And then this is all of the transaction entry information that you would have seen in Dynamics GP. So they can look at all of that. And in addition, they can also look at the distribution. So these are the distribution numbers that were set up. Um, these could be, of course, pulling right from the vendor card um, and the AP clerk does have the ability to adjust these before submitting. If the approver at this point saw an issue with the distribution, they could certainly check this box to highlight this specific one and reject this from being approved along with putting in some notes about what the distribution should be. And that'll go right back to the AP clerk. Um, in this view, they can also see that attachment. So we'll drill in here and they would be able to see the actual invoice. And this again, in this process, was brought in 
through the AI technology of invoice capture attached with GP's doc attach, and then it flowed all the way through to the approval process. All right, so once everything has been reviewed, all of these can be highlighted and you can hit the approve button. And here again is where the approver has the ability to send a message, a specific message about these back to the AP clerk and then hit approve and that flows back in. The AP clerk will receive an email giving her all this information and she can move on to the next process, which would be batching all of her invoices for payment. Okay, next up is our Payment Hub product and the features that it has available for processing your payment batches. So first off, we have what's called the Action Board. And McCorma has created a way for your AP staff to save their criteria for how they want their payment batches put together and allows them to process them all from one window. Now you can still use McCorma and use the traditional GP windows, but we find that this is much easier and faster to be able to do it all at once. So from the action board, um, a process can be set up that matches what your AP staff would do on a weekly basis. In this example, the company has three different databases, so Complete Solutions, Balanced Business, and Fabricam, and they build batches on a weekly basis based on what's due in the next seven days. They put all utility bills into one batch, and then there's some employees that get paid out of payables, and so there's a batch for that. And this criteria is saved for them every single week. It knows by the setup what checkbook to use, what type of batch that needs to be created, um, the currency, all of that information is here. And so they can just click one button and the system will go across company databases. It will create those payment batches for them and come back to this main window. Now, this is not a macro. You can go and do whatever you want within any other um, software on your computer as it runs. Um, you won't be able to do anything in GP as this person running the process, but anywhere else on their computer, they can be working while this goes. Now you can see from the flashing windows, which can be turned off, that it has moved me into a new company. Now it's moving me into another company. I was originally in Complete Solutions, and when it finishes here in Balanced Business, it will log me back into Complete Solutions, and it will show me all of the batches that were created. Now, of course, we're following all of Dynamics GP's rules, so the person processing these batches does have to have access to all of those companies in order for it to be able to smoothly process throughout. Okay, well, we're going to come back to the main menu and it's going to give us a report that tells us how many batches it created in each company database, how long that took, about a minute and 22 seconds, um, we see the number of transactions it pulled in and the dollar amounts. Okay, so the next step would be sending those payments through an approval workflow. Now, earlier you may have seen me using our invoice capture to send invoices through on an invoice approval process. Now I'm showing you a payment approval process where your controller, Maybe your CFO or owner of the company wants to review the payments before they go out the door, really looking at dollar amounts and how much money is being sent. We can highlight all of these at once and request approval so that these can be approved on the payment side. All right, so now everything has been approved it's going to give me a window it's going to give me another um, 
report. And what it's telling me here is that several of those batches are now pending approval. You can also see that one is fully approved. Uh, that's because our secure approval workflow allows you to set up your approval process a lot of different ways. You can actually set up threshold dollar amounts, so payments under a certain dollar amount do not need any additional approval. Maybe certain bills, like utility bills that have already been approved on the invoice side, you don't want to have to approve them again on the payment side, so they can be fully approved by putting in, in with a special class ID approval or something like that. And then those batches will actually split off. You can see that this these two invoices were actually part of this original batch, and then they were split off into a secondary batch so they could be fully approved and you could process that batch right away. Okay, so back here, the triangle or error message that we're getting is just simply to say that these are pending approval, and we can move on to the next step, which would be um, waiting for your approver to actually review and approve. So we're gonna keep seeing those triangles here for the batches that we've sent for approval until we get a notice back from our approvers. So next up, I'm gonna show you what it looks like for your approvers to actually review and approve within power approvals. All right, now I'm gonna show you McCormick's Power Approvals. And this was designed to work with the Payment Hub for your payment approvers who are out of the office a lot, or maybe they don't get into Dynamics GP. They need a quick and easy way to review and approve those payment batches on the go or from wherever they are. And the Power Approvals links up with our Secure Approval Workflow so they can do that and also gives them cross-company access for approval. So we've got some pending approvals here. Now they would have gotten an email that would have told them what they're needing to approve. And when they come in here, this is what they would see. So here we have um, incomplete solutions, a lot of vendor invoices that need to be reviewed for payment. So if we drill in, uh, we could scroll down through here and drill into any one of these. Okay, so here we're seeing all of the vouchers, so all the different vouchers that make up this one $15,000 payment to Ace Travel. We can drill into an individual voucher and we're seeing the transaction entry information again, so they can see payment terms and all of that. Also, because um, we have it a completely end-to-end -end solution, they can also see an image of that invoice. So here would be an invoice image that's coming through for this particular payment. All right, so once they have gone through and reviewed all of these, they can highlight, they can highlight them one by one um, and approve, or you can highlight in bulk um, mark all and approve, or um, you can highlight if we unmark, of course, then you do have the ability to reject. So if I just highlight this one and I did see a problem, I didn't want to pay all of those vouchers right now. I want to lower the dollar amount for what we're paying Ace Travel today. I can hit the reject button. Here I can give a detailed reason for why I want to reject. I can tell them the vouchers that they should remove, whatever the reason might be, put all that information in here, and then um, I can hit the reject button. And what that will do is send an email message back to your AP clerk and let her know what she needs to do with that vou those vouchers. She can fix it, anything that still needs to be approved for that payment, she can send it back through the workflow and then it can be reviewed and approved. Now out here um, in Power Approvals, you do have the ability to see things a couple of different ways. Um, so you can see your specific transactions for approval. You can look at just approvable transactions altogether as you may have more access to approve other um, invoices 
just based on threshold amounts. And then you can look at all transactions. So even those that you can't approve, you could still review them out here. And then you can roll everything up by batch, uh, which I think gives you a really nice view if you're rolling up by batch. Then when you drill in, you're seeing each vendor's payment in its own little spot. You can drill in once again, open these up and you're seeing all of the vouchers. If there was attachments, um, those would be listed here and you can drill into the vouchers like we did before. So a couple different ways you can look at the information um, in the sorting capabilities. All right, so let's get to approving. I'm gonna go ahead and just approve all of these so we can move on to the next step in showing you what the AP clerk would do once everything's been fully approved. All right, now we are back in Dynamics GP and we're back on the action board where we want to process checks and EFTs. So we can see now we've got lots of batches all together here that are ready for processing across three company databases. And I can highlight them all. I can highlight any one that doesn't have a triangle. Um, just for ease, I'm going to highlight just a couple of them here um, and hit process. And it would do the same thing, uh, go across the company databases and process those payments. Now, if they're checks, they're gonna send to a printer that's already been designated. And you can go and make sure that everything's okay on the printing process side. If these are EFTs, the system has a way to set up to say, do you want it to go ahead and send the remittance and then post the EFT and then even go ahead and generate the file that you'll need to send off to your bank. That all can happen automatically in this one window with one processing button if you're doing in-house checks and EFTs. So you can see some of these flashing windows. Again, those can be turned off as it goes through and processes everything for us. All right, now it's going to give me a report that simply tells me what batches it did process and everything went okay. And we'll move on to the next step, which is to post our batches. Now, um, you'll, you may have noticed I did select more batches than what is showing up here because I do have the automation turned on for those EFT batches to go ahead and post them through. So it has sent the remittances to the vendors, it has posted the payments into Dynamics GP, and I even created that bank file for me. So it's sitting out there waiting for me to handle as well. But these are the check batches that were processed, and you do need to post those after you've verified that everything came off the printer okay. So I've already done that. I can select all three of these and hit post. It's gonna post all three batches for me really quickly and easily. And again, this could be across company databases. In this case, these were all from Complete Solutions, but um, it would do its thing of logging in and out for me if that was the case of cross company. It gives me a nice little report. Now, once everything's done, we do have an audit log available that would show you um, the checks that went out, what batches, all of that information. And I'll show you that now in our McCorma audit log. If we redisplay, this is a really great place to come and pull reports uh, for your auditors or just for your controllers to be able to see what batches were processed, who printed them, who approved them, um, and all of that information. So we can drill into any one of these and we will see all of the payment numbers, check numbers that were issued, amounts. We can drill in even further to be able to see that uh, payables Zoom window, who approved the payment, and a image of the check 
or EFT payment that's been voided. It'll never have a MICR line if it is a check or a signature, but you'll know who the signature was based on the approver, the logic that you may have set up in your secure approval workflow process. So you have all of this through the audit log. You can also see all of those images through the transaction um, if you're viewing your documents through transaction by document or transaction by vendor, anytime you're looking at a posted payment, those images will come up. All right, so that would be the process and what things would look like if you were doing in-house checks and EFTs. So now I'm gonna show you what it looks like to use the Action Board and the Payment Hub to actually process your payments and send them to an outsourced provider. Instead of doing in-house checks, which the Payment Hub is great at, especially using the Action Board, you can offload a lot of your processes to an outsourced provider who can send your payments on your behalf. And I wanna show you how quick and easy that integration really is. So we're gonna go through some of the steps you've already seen before. First off, we're gonna create some payment batches and we have a process already set up to do that. I'm just going to do this one batch in this one company, though, although it could go across company databases. So we just have one batch we're dealing with. All right, so it's created that batch for us. And now we want to, of course, send it through for approval. If we um, had that set up, then you've seen that process earlier where we use power approvals for approval and they were able to review and approve. That's a crucial step in this process. But then once they are approved and open for available processing, you're going to go through the same thing. You're going to highlight that batch. This is the one. And you're going to hit process. And this is where the magic happens because you're done. What's happening right here with this additional screen that you're seeing is it's taking your payment file as it has been approved and reviewed, and it's sending it off to the outsource provider. And it could give us a report, let us know that that is okay, everything went fine. And then um, all we need to do is verify that it actually got to the outsource provider. So we're gonna give that just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and hit process. And we're waiting for this to let us know that everything was received by the outsource provider and we are good to go. So since that happened and that got removed, then we can move to the posting step and we can see that it's ready to post in Dynamics GP. Now I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna show you what it would look like if you did go, and you are, of course can go, out to the outsource provider's portal and look at the information there. So this is the batch that was submitted. We can verify that everything came over here to the outsource provider. All of our payments are um, being assigned a reference number. And here it would tell us the payment method type. Now. The outsource provider will be in contact with your vendors to make sure that they're sending the payment type that they would they would like. So that could be check, it could be ACH, or it could be something called a virtual card. And you would see that here on the portal. Now these currently all say print checks, but they could say ACH or virtual card, and you would know what type of payment that your vendor actually got. Now, the beauty of our integration with the outsource provider is you're not losing any information in your Dynamics GP system. You've sent everything over. We've verified that it was received. You can see it over here in the portal. You can post everything into your Dynamics GP system. So we'll go ahead and post everything in. And now I wanna show you how you have all of this information still in GP. So, this is a report just saying that um, everything posted properly. All right, so back over here in the portal, let's look at 
a travel company. It's referencing this payment um, reference number as 100059. So if I come in here, go into inquiry, purchasing transactions by document, and I type that in, 100059, there it is. So if this vendor was to call and say, um, you know, did you send me my payment? You can come right into your system and you can review that right from here. All that information's in here. You can see who had approved it. You can see an image of the information that would have been sent. Now, this isn't the exact check because your payment provider is sending the check, but it's all of the um information that they would have been receiving. You also can see that on the um, portal side, and I'll show you that as well. If we go back into the portal and we click on the reference image, you're seeing that here as well. Uh, the invoices that were paid, um, the check number reference, and all of that. Now, this, this is the um, information that your vendor would receive so they can call the outsource provider directly and um, get information from them about the payment when it was mailed any questions they might have the outsource provider can answer those and your AP staff is freed up for other important things that they could be doing but they can also access the same information and right here in their Dynamics GP system all right so that is how remote payment service would tie into the payment process in Dynamics GP with the Payment Hub. Thank you for watching this video. As you can see, McCormick can help streamline your AP process from the minute your invoices come in all the way through to payment and reconciliation. We can help you implement this whole end-to-end -end process or just the piece that helps you with what you're struggling with. Please click the link below to talk to one of our experts.